our first definition that we have is a point. A point has no dimension. It's represented as a dot, and but unlike physical dots, it has no size. And the way we label a dot is either just A or B. That's all we would need to put. Please note it has no dimension. Next, we have a line, and a line has one dimension. It is represented by a line with two arrowheads, but extends without ends. And through any two points, there is exactly one line. You can use any two points to name it. So for example, the name of this line we could call AB. You could also call it BA. You could also call it BC. BC or CB, and then lastly, you could call it AC or CA. Please note that the symbol above is a line symbol. It has arrows on both ends. The other way we can name it is line M, and you can use that by, because of this um, cursive letter. If the line didn't have that cursive letter, you couldn't use it, but please note you must put the word line if you want to use that cursive letter. You cannot use the cursive letter and put the line symbol above it. The next definition we have is a plane. And a plane has two dimensions. It's represented by a shape that looks like a floor or wall. It extends infinitely in all directions along a flat surface. The way you name a plane is you must have at least three points on the plane to use. And you see that these are points and M is not a point. So we can use any combination of the points ABC, CAB, ACB, doesn't matter. There's also CBA, any combination of the three letters. Lastly, we can use the letter that is not a point and call it plain M. You can, um, you do not need to put spaces between the points. You could technically do it if there was another point on here. You could also use that point, but there's no need to name a plane with more than three points. Next is a segment. A segment is in the line family. It's part of a line that begins at one point and ends at another point. The points are called the endpoints. Okay? A segment must be named by its endpoints. So for example, GH or HG. That's really the only name of this segment. Please note the symbol above is straight, unlike the line symbol had arrows on the end. A segment does not. Another part of the line family is a ray. A ray is a part of a line that begins at one point, the end point, and extends infinitely in one direction. Hopefully you remember what infinitely means, forever. A ray must be named by starting with its endpoint. So if you come back and look at this ray, its endpoint is E. So the only name for this ray is ED. And you'll see that the ray symbol always extends to the right. Even if you had a ray that went in this direction, you would still use the same arrow always pointing to the right. If this, was, if this had an E and a D, even though it starts at E and goes to D, you would still use the same ray symbol going to the right, not the left. The last kind of definition that we have is opposite rays. And opposite rays are two rays that lie on the same line and have a common endpoint. So if this is a ray, a line, I'm sorry, the only way that we can get two rays with common endpoints would be to name it BA and BC because they are going in opposite directions. Please be careful. See that BA, even though it starts, ray BA starts here and goes here, but you still put the symbol going to the right. And ray BC starts here and goes this way. And because they're on the same line and have the same endpoint, they're what we call common opposite rays. Lastly, you have to know what the word collinear means. And hopefully, do you see a word inside collinear? 
okay? The word inside is line. And to be collinear means that they all lie on the same line. So are A, B, and C on lines A, C? Yes, A, B, and C are on the same line. So are they, yes, would be my answer to this. And are A, B, C collinear? Yes. If I asked you are A, B, D collinear, hopefully you would answer no. Be careful though, if I ask are A, D collinear, think about that. Even though they're not on this line, between any two points, I can always draw a line. So if I ask you, are AD collinear, the answer is yes, because through any two points, there is always one line. And even though they're not on AC, AD are, are collinear. So any two points are always collinear. Lastly, we have the word coplanar, and that means it can contain all points are said to be coplanar if a single plane contains all of them. So if you look at this box, how many planes do you see? Hopefully your answer was six. Front, the back, the top, the bottom, the left, the right. They're all their own planes. So for example, the bottom of my box is plane E, B, C. And you'll realize I only named it with three letters. Even though I named plane E, B, C, F has to be part of that plane. If you trace this with a pen and went E to B to C, you would see that F has to be the other point in that plane. So I don't need to label the plane E, B, C, F. I know that it's there. So when I ask you, are A, H, G, and D coplanar, do they lie? Are they the top of the box, the bottom of the box, the left, the right, the front, or back? So A, H, G, D, that's the top of the box. So are they coplanar? Yes. Are A, H, G, B? Well, A, H, G is A, H, G. That's the top of the box. Is B down here on top of that box so there's no way that I can make a plane so are they coplanar no R A H D so here's A H D is the top of the box we already know that G would be part of that box so yes now this is similar to the question are two points collinear if I asked you are three points coplanar if I name any three points, they're always going to make a plane. There's always going to be a fourth point. Even this, if I picked point A, G, B, A, G, and B, even though you think, oh, they're not near each other, look, this would be the plane that slices through the box. So even though there was only six planes on the start of the box, there are actual more planes throughout the box. And please remember, even though these planes are just the sides of the box, you have to remember that planes are infinite in all directions. So technically, they're still extending. So when I ask you, are three points always coplanar? Our answer is going to be yes. And then I ask you, are four points always coplanar? And that you have to be careful. Because I could ask you, are F, C, D, and A a plane? Well, if you see, F, C, and D are in plane with G. So G would be the fourth point, not A. So four points do not have to be collinear. So what you need to write down as an extra note is two points are always collinear and three points are always coplanar. Okay? If you can remember that, that's going to help you with a lot of these questions. Well, that ends our first video. Thank you, and have a good day.